out. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Scott Lowe? I'm good. I'm good. I shouldn't be here, but I am. I just can't help myself. <laughs> Where are you? I'm, I'm on the TV. Don't you see me? <laughs> I love the TV. That's what I wanted to talk to you. I didn't know if you were in some special space, like sneaking out to work or what. No, I'm what avoiding, time is it I'm avoiding work. I'm suppo- it's uh, afternoon time. My classes start tomorrow, and I need to have uh, syllabi and lesson plans put together, which are sadly lacking. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, I might pull one of your all-nighters. I'm inspired. I listened to you on, uh, it was my Saturday or Friday, I can't remember, and you were working on your, your websites and playing music. That was oh, that's fun. right. That was a good night. Hey, so I love what you're doing with DS106 TV. Can you take me through your process? I'm mm-hmm. loving it. Well, thanks. Uh, my, my process. Yeah, because so, uh, you have like three things going on at any given time, or four. Well, so I, it's not really a process. I think it's more of a method. And, you know, you've probably heard this before, but just, well, you won't hear it, so I won't play it. I was going to play the Kurtz method. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> methods are unsound. But basically, I'm using that free application, CamTwist. Um, okay. What's the one that you guys have? Wire? It's Wirecast, which Wire. is not cheap. Exactly, exactly. That looks pretty fancy. It's nice. It's very TV-like, you know, mm-hmm. with the the lower third and, you know, pulling in your desktop present- presenter and showing video. And you you can actually run it through a sound flower, too, mm-hmm. which is kind of nice because you get the... I don't know if you can do that with Cam to us. I haven't played with it at all. Yeah, I was playing videos and the audio comes through on the sound, on the sound flower. I think the feature set is fairly similar, but this is just a, an open source project, so it doesn't have the bells and whistles and... I guess you need to be a little bit tech inclined to figure it out, but that wire cast looks pretty tough too. Just, yeah. Yeah. Basically, what I have is uh, just the ability to put all these different elements on, and I'm kind of experimenting and mixing. And uh, one thing that it does have is it makes use of all of the Apple, uh, I guess they call it quartz graphic features, so you can add color, just like the the iTunes um, visualization stuff. You know, so you can make colors yeah, and effects totally. and waves. And, uh, yeah, I'm just messing around. I don't exactly know what I'm doing, just having some fun, basically. Yeah, because I really love the way you have, like, your uh, video of walking around Tokyo, and then you're up in the right-hand corner, and then you have this crazy, like, counter thing on the bottom. And then you have something like crazy image of like, you know, Kim in North Korea or whatever mm-hmm. it is just coming through. Well, like, what is it like? What, okay, let, me talk like- you, let me talk you through that. Basically, uh, you, you get one main desktop or image, and that can be either a video, it can be my webcam, or it could be a slideshow. And that's, I guess, the well, think of Photoshop and think of the layers in Photoshop. That it's like sure. a clear sheet of plastic that you can draw something on and put one layer on top of another. So the base layer is one of your video sources, or it can be an image, whatever. And then on that, you can add as many PIPs as you want, pictures within a picture. And a picture in a picture can be any other video source. So for one of them, I had the slideshow of those silly pictures. The other was that web page, which was a um, just that manual clock thing that some guy did a few years ago. And uh, you you can show your whole desktop and select a certain portion of it. So I just selected that portion of the desktop for the clock. And then I put my image on the video camera up in the corner, like you saw. And then you can alternate. So at one minute, the slideshow can be the main desktop, or you can swap the source to anything else. So I just replayed the video that I shot yesterday. And that was totally accidental. It, it occurred to me, and I think Dr. Garcia confirmed it, that that's not a bad storytelling technique. That, uh, no, not at all. You know, make it's great. Just get some video that's of meaning to you. It could be talking about movies or whatever, and sort of narrate it along. And we could, with the Skype video, have you know a different speaker in each corner, or something. Yeah. And, you know, diff- different people can talk about it. Which is amazing. And you could have that all on the screen. Now, I guess the difference between Cam Twist, but I don't know this, and Wirecast is Wirecast can do several video camera inputs. Right. Cam Twist can do one. Well, actually, uh, I, uh, uh, the reason I went to Aki Habara yesterday, that's the electronics area, is because I needed a, um, an adapter for my FireWire. My iMac has two FireWire inputs. One's the old 400, and the other's the new 800. And my sure. EyeSight camera is the 800 size, but I've also got my hard drive as the other, or 400, you know what I mean. 
So sure. uh, the adapter allowed me to put the old eyesight in. So I have two cameras, and I don't want to put two up because it would just be two of my face. But I guess if you had a FireWire mixer, not a mixer, a FireWire um, hub, then you could have as many FireWire cameras as you wanted. Then each exactly. instance is just a different in video source. That's not that's see so Cam Twist can do a lot of what Wirecast does. Looks like it might, yeah. Looks like yeah. it might. Certainly for free and for somebody who doesn't know if they want to make the investment or they can't get the funding, you can at least play with this and sort of develop the uh, the skill set. So when you do get totally. a, a more professional studio, you're ready. That's rad. That yeah. is so cool. I'm going to have to play with that because right now we have this Wirecast. It's actually not our... So I work as an instructional technologist with another group of folk. And one of us, Andy Rush, who does all the new media stuff, actually, while Timmy Boy was doing all this stuff with DS106 TV, mm -hmm. Andy Rush had been kind of pursuing this stuff for a different reason because we had these live video, like the president talking, whatever, that they wanted to get kind of nice quality stuff. So he developed a whole setup. Mm -hmm. Turns out the setup was a MacBook Pro, Wirecast, this uh, special kind of camera. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's just all these different things. And he was doing it. So when Timmy Boy came out and here's what I was doing, their two solutions were like identical. So we had the whole setup ready to go. So when Timmy Boy did it, I was like, oh, I think we have that set up. And we did. Now, the fact is, is our group doesn't own it. It's owned right. by University Relations, and they're asking for it which yeah, is a real yeah. bummer. So I might need Cam Twist. Well, I just remember hearing you after that first um, karaoke, night, or the, the, kar the video karaoke night, that insane night. Just I could hear <laughs> as you were talking, just you had that excitement, and the wheels were spinning in your head, and you said, oh, the crap I can do with this. And looks like you've done it in this last week. I mean, you got your kids on the air with the, the, the show. That was amazing. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Was it Lee? That's... And who was the other girl with Lee? Uh, Jen. Lee and Jen, those two are magic together. Yeah, they're fun. That was great. Lee yeah, and, says, they, and they love it. Yeah, well, it's obvious they do, and they're, they're good at it. So, yeah, please keep them doing it. And then the next yeah, day you had Jen with some guy. I yeah, Joe. Joe, and they did a good yeah. job, too. Yeah, they Very were good pretty job. good. They did the Andy Rush show because they said, you know, where we work is too gym groom centric. Could you imagine okay. that? Anything being gym group centric? <laughs> uh, I, I think I can. I think I can. Yeah. So I think was that was that, that Andy that they showed setting up the uh, the system? That's that, right. And on the he's green the screen. one who kind of was doing this, and so it was so cool. It was like a weird, cool conversion. We had the technology, then we had the ideas. Thanks to Timmy Boy, kind of getting it out there and just having fun. Yeah, but it looked like Andy doesn't have a beard, does he? He doesn't have a beard, so no. he's the only one from your institution that doesn't have a beard, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. Well, Martha doesn't have a beard either. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what's your job, man? It sounds like you're doing some fun stuff. Yeah. You're an, IT, a... you're an IT coordinator. No, I'm actually I'm an instructional technology specialist. And so what uh -huh. does that mean? I think traditionally it's meant like, you know, you're a blackboard douchebag or whatever. Like, you know, you just kind of like, I'm an LMS guy. But we had this guy, Gardner Campbell, who's no longer with us, who kind of brought a group together at Mary Washington. It was just like, look, you guys got to start thinking about other things, social media, blogging, and, you know, just really be a research and development group. And we really took it to heart. And so we just went crazy with the social media, the blogging, Twitter, all that stuff. And it's kind of converged into us being like a, I think a really good, solid group of folks who are experimenting with this stuff for teaching and learning and what it could mean not only for our liberal arts experience, which is what we are, very mm -hmm. close, intimate, but also how that kind of now is starting to move into the open online courses and how we can bring the emotion and the intimacy back. And I think with all the stuff that people in DS106 are doing, <laughs> you among them, I mean, your stuff has been awesome. You know, we are starting to see, like, you know, there's a space for this, and it's not about, you know, an LMS. It's about people, and it's about that sense of touch and hearing you on the radio come in and, you know, seeing you on the TV experimenting hmm. with this stuff. It's something more. You know, well, let, me ask like you, let me ask you this. People. <laughs> is, is this being noticed with the, what you're describing by uh, the, who the, the decision makers or the, the people know. who matter? I, you know, that's a really good question. 
I tend to think, I don't want to say, like, my direct boss, I really like him. He's like an assistant provost, and he's a great guy, and he gives us a tremendous amount of freedom to do what we want. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if the administration at Mary Washington, we're at a particular school, we kind of have been through four presidents in like five years. I mean, the administration is kind of tail spinning constantly. So I don't think many of us really look to them to kind of say, hey, this is great stuff, keep going. I mean, state of Virginia, we haven't gotten raises in four years. There's always been like, here come the cuts, here come the cuts. So, I mean, it's it hasn't been a culture, this whole kind of culture of like, we got to like lock down and hope we keep our jobs. You know, we were worried for our jobs for a couple sure. of years there. Sure. And, you know, the fact, who knows, we may still be, but the fact is, is it's like no one has had any time to really look around and say, hey, this is cool stuff. And it's a little bit discouraging if I think about it on the broader level, but Anything that's good that's happened for us has happened amongst our group with faculty and kind of grassroots. So I imagine this could be the same thing. I just, you know, I don't know yet. You know, this has been such a crazy experiment and so much fun, but I don't know how I'd go into a, like a faculty development meeting and be like, here's how you do your own DS-106. Or, you know, there's so many great parts of it. And, you know... Zach, you know Zach Dow, noise professor, right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't know if he blogged this yet. I should probably check, but the noise professor put out this awesome kind of infographic last last night. He shared it with me. I don't know if he blogged it yet, but I hope he does. But anyway, it kind of breaks down all the different technologies that have gone into DS-106 and how they've kind of interrelated and framed this kind of network we're seeing and <clears throat> excuse me what i think was so cool about it is that twitter was at the center of it mm -hmm. and you know still so many of you know the faculty at mary washington and a lot of faculty in general think twitter is the stupidest thing in the world so to say like look if you want to do a class like this and you want to do it online and you know you want to experiment with the possibilities of networking twitter has to be at the center of it or something like it I think a lot of them would kind of look askance. And, you know, I think that's how they felt about blogging to four years ago, five years ago, but we cracked that knot. But Twitter for me would be, you know, which is interesting. And you tell me when to shut up, but we're doing this kind of pilot with six online courses this summer into next year. And I'm going to be part of that. So I'm going to be really piloting with faculty uh, a setup for those faculty who are willing that is similar to DS 106 in terms of technology and network. But one of the things that's kind of intangible, and I think you're starting to realize it, I'm starting to realize it, anyone who's involved in DS-106 is starting to realize it, mm -hmm. that the network and the people around you and who you go out there and when they do something, you give them feedback and, you know, I do something, they give me feedback. You know, you start to see the fact that that network that we've been building for years come into some sort of real fruition of, like, doing shit, getting people to kind of give you feedback and like people joining in and helping and hopefully in return you helping them you know faculty haven't been tweeting or blogging or part right. of a network online when they teach an online class it is going to be really like they are in a vacuum you know because it's all about that sense of community around you so it's a really interesting problem that you know it's really like if you haven't been doing this stuff you have to now yeah well, I noticed, uh, I forget who blogged it, but Martha did a collaboration with another instructor, and she taught this instructor's students how to use Yahoo Pipes. And that idea, I think it was her original blog post of giving something away, and the yeah. idea of sharing your knowledge and your expertise with another class, and then hopefully that instructor will return the favor. That is kind of the way sort of collegial relations are supposed to work, isn't it? Yeah, I, I just think that was such a great model and such a great example. And, you know, she did that through Skype by sharing her screen. I mean, talk about simplicity that anyone could do. And then the whole thing is, you know, the technology is seamless. It's this idea of like, hey, she blogged it. Someone in Puerto Rico, the great Antonio, uh, Antonio Vantajato, was like, right. hey, I'll take up her, her up on this. And there's a connection there, and it's only going to be good for both of them. Mm -hmm. And it also suggests the fact that, you know, we have, as institutions, not even begun to scratch the surface of what it means to kind of work between. It's like why I'm interested in what you're doing in Japan with the whole radio thing and as DS-106 
as it happens again or when it happens again, like how can we start, you know, cross pollinating the stuff we're doing? Like, I mean, to me, that just makes total sense. You know what I mean? It just, I want to do that. There's a professor uh, in San Francisco, Professor Hanley, and he's a really cool guy. He had written me, he's like, you know, we should do a film course that takes place in like five different cities around the world. And each part of the course focuses on films about a particular city, the city wherein the people are. And so you could have a, a class, a university class in Tokyo, you know, one in, um, you know, London, one in New York City, uh, one in, you name it, you know, name another big city, Rome. And you have those classes, like, when it's there, when it's focused on their city, they're the ones who present for everyone else. And mm-hmm. they kind of run the network for that point in time, and everyone else has to feed back into it. They could watch the film simultaneously. They can comment on Twitter. I mean, you could do all this kind of stuff, you know, and you could do it in this real kind of powerful way through institutions or without them. But, I mean, I do think institutions could really help harness that and help us think that, you know, and have some money behind it so people get paid. Well, so, uh, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's just know. it. Well, it's going to be driven by the instructors, isn't it? And, it is. You know, there, I suppose there will be some universities and administrations that are realizing that the uh, <laughs> the writing's on the wall and things need to be reworked that might support it. I don't know. But it's surprising that what you just described is not happening already with these the simultaneous commenting on, on work. That's a, that's a beautiful idea. Yeah. I mean, I like the idea of thinking through some of this stuff, you know, with people. And DS-106, man, that's just it. I mean... It's it's a class that really has been about so many things. But I was talking with Dr. Garcia and Noise Professor last night, and it seemed to me that what it was really about is, you know, this kind of real solid professional development with a group of people who are pretty open and, you know, not perfect by any means. But, you know, it's been a way to kind of focus on these new technologies and think through them while living in them and expressing a part of who we are through them. Like, you know, that's the thing is... This isn't like a forum where I go there and I ask you a question about radio or some particular technical thing and you know it and you answer it. Like, I get to hear you. I get to hear what's going on in your life, which is pretty significant right now. What your taste in music is, what films you like, what this rocky craziness is. It's just like there's a whole nother layer and layer upon layer of who we are here. And that's what online education is missing, frankly, is that. I want to learn about and from people. I don't want to learn from a goddamn machine. Yeah, but how, how do you put it in your promotion packet as an instructor? I, mean, I don't have to worry about that. I'm yeah. not actually, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't, I'll let the, see, I've come to the point where it's like, I'll let them figure that out. I mean... I'm not, I don't have tenure. I'll never get tenure. Mm-hmm. And I'm doing stuff that could certainly get me fired at any given point. And, you know, I don't, you know, I, I really feel like, look, you know, you're either in it or you're not. And if that's all you're worried about, well, then good luck. Get your tenure, write your book, do your thing. I'm fine with that. I, yeah. I have no problem with that. But it's it's not going to, you know, it's not where my interests lie. You know what's, what I mean? What's like, that line from West Side Story at the beginning before the fight scene? In out, in out. Let's get yeah. cracking. That's right. Let me let me do, just take just a minute here, if you don't mind. This idea of professional development and specifically DS one hundred six. You know, I'm not really part of the course. I just found out it accidentally, and I'm grateful for that. But um, yeah, I'm doing all of this stuff and the bells and whistles, and maybe it looks interesting and it sounds good, and that's gratifying to hear. I, I certainly love the feedback of. There's a certain amount of ego at play for anybody who does this stuff. But this is all stuff that I, I didn't really know how to do two months ago. I exactly. knew the parts and the pieces, and I had sort of visualized it as a, as a mental exercise. But it was having this structure and also this community. Like, in a sense, I'm doing it to, to show others and, of course, to get that feedback. But you've just, uh, you and the others have created this environment whereby somebody can just try these different things out. And just about every time I do something, it is an experiment just to see how it goes. So uh, I, hopefully what I'm saying echoes what you were saying about professional development before, that I've just um, developed and proven this skill set that I guess was latent before, and now it's uh, 
it's happened. So I'm, again, grateful for that. And it's it's really, I mean, you put it very well, and it's meant to see it, because I, too, like, I've been saying this all week. I mean, I was I had helped design this blogging platform for Mary Washington, and it's been like three or four years in, and I'm really proud of the stuff we did and how it took around the school, but I was really stuck in it. Like, that's all I was doing is WordPress, 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 plug-in theme, updates, you know, this blog, that blog. <laughs> I love blogging, you know, I'm a major blog fan. But the fact is, is this opened up a whole new world to me and, like, folks like Grant Potter coming on and say, hey, let's try live radio. Yeah. And, you know, Timmy Boyd saying, hey, what about TV? And Noise Professor, like, saying, hey, I have this whole idea of, you know, how we're going to think about... Um, what the radio can do and how you can start creating shows. And he starts spitting together these crazy shows, and I'm thinking to myself, like, wow, that just changed my whole conception of how this class can be. And that's freaking amazing. And like, like you said, it's like over the last three or four months, I've learned more as an instructional technologist than probably my five years all told hmm. before. That's and that's because it's just I'm doing it not – not only with, but for other people. Like, I'm like you, man. I like it to do cool shit when people say that shit was good, and I'll keep doing it because if they keep saying it. And the other best part about it is I have now a whole nother part of my network, community, whatever you want to call it, that I didn't have before. Like, I love Dr. Garcia, Julia Forsyth, yeah. um, you know, Noise Professor, the list goes on, Timmy Boy, you. I mean, there's so many other people now who, like, when I see them updating on Twitter or blogging and stuff, I get excited. And I felt that about a bunch of people before, but that's just gotten bigger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's bigger in enough way because it's also very small. You know, there's like 20, 30 people, max, who are really kind of holding the core. Yeah. And that's enough. You know what I mean? Like it's a perfect size. I love it. Yeah, I, I've I've mentioned this before to others that getting bigger could could uh, take away some of that charm and magic. Yeah, it would. I, I, feel. I agree with that. Yeah, I don't think there's any reason. That's why I'm glad that like DS106 is its own thing, and I don't think it needs to be anything more. You know what I mean? I mean, I I, I feel like it is really good what it is now, and, you know, who knows? Things change. It may change. People may do other things, and that's great, too. But, I mean, if it were a matter of us getting bigger or going for some sort of wider net, I would immediately say I'm not interested in that. Well, let's do this for just a second. I've, I kind of have a direction I want to go with this, but I've got a couple of questions for you that hopefully will take us there. Sure. And it sort of is the the background of DS-106. So I'm sure many people know all of this and are bored, but I don't know it. Um, mm -hmm. Martha is the actual professor who's signed for the course, and you're supporting as an instructional technologist, or does she have the same role as you do? Yeah, we're both instructional technologists, and we're both teaching two separate courses. Okay. And then, so here's how it's kind of working out. I taught DS-106 in the spring for the first time, and it was, you know, a class, face-to-face, -face, 25 people. And it was a real big experiment. It was a lot of fun, blogging, Twitter, all that stuff, you know, but I didn't really open it up. That was just kind of like, I didn't really know what I was doing, frankly. And then the next semester in the fall, I did it, and it kind of started to seem like people were interested. They wanted to play along, but I didn't formally open it up then either. And a bunch of people wrote to me and said, hey, do you want to make this an open class? I think it would be fun. And I was a little nervous, and I'll tell you why. Because I didn't want to open it up and be like, hey, here's this open course. And then it'd be a complete failure. Like, you know, three people sign up. I would have gotten right, over right. it. But I was like, you know, I'm going to design all this thing and build all this stuff. You know, but I was like, you know, why not? If it sucks, it sucks. I'll just try it. So about December 10th, I was talking with Martha, who was going to teach DS-106 for the first time this spring, okay. and we, she had a course she was teaching, I had a course I was teaching, both of them were face-to-face, -face, and then I had this other online course at Mary Washington, that Mary Washington doesn't really do online ed, so that was kind of a real big experiment, and then I had the open course, and so me and Mark started planning together, Alan Levine got into planning, Tom Woodward, Darcy Norman, a whole bunch of other folks started to kind of get interested. And then Tom Woodward started to kind of say, hey, we should do assignments to practice. And mm -hmm. so before the course even started, 
in the beginning of December or about mid-December, there were like 200 posts of people doing animated GIFs from all over the world. <laughs> right. I was like, what the hell is happening right now? I got really excited. And then, as you know, um, come January 10th, the class starts. Everything kind of starts going. People are submitting assignments. And it's just this really awesome experience where the radio started like week two or three. Uh, people started doing all this stuff. There was amazing kind of focus around Twitter, especially when DS106 Radio came around, and the course just kind of emerged. And, you know, it, it hasn't been a perfect experience. I think me and Martha both realized we've been pushing our students at Mary Washington very hard, Sounds like asking it. them to do a lot. And uh, I believe in that, but also, you know, this is Martha's first time teaching ever, and she's been freaking phenomenal. Is that right? I, wow. I couldn't imagine being in this situation first time teaching. and She's just kicking serious ass and it's been amazing, and just everybody. I mean, talk about me feeling like a, a rich, spoiled brat. <laughs> when I think about how many people who I'm friends with and are part of my network stepped up for me and for themselves. I mean, it's not just for me. It's for themselves. I mean, they're doing this for them. But to see them emerge around DS106 and use that as a rallying call for their own creativity and their own greatness is just... Yeah, it's been freaking awesome. I mean, well, I think I, what you said, that's just it. What you said, it's, it's in service to something else. It's not self, or it's not that ego I was mentioning before, but it's kind of serving the, the idea of a digital storytelling class done across a network as well as face-to-face. -face. So, sure, you, you have this network of A-list edu bloggers who promoted what you were doing and brought in more people, but I don't think yeah. we're doing it to serve ourselves. We're doing it to sort of serve this thing we believe in, which is the use of technology to connect with others and to share ideas, which kind of brings me to the other question that I had. And this sure. is, what's going to happen when, not it's not what's going to happen, but how, how, how is this going to unfold when somebody learns about this, uh, say, for example, a, a professor in Tokyo or anywhere, and they want to do a DS-106 type class, and they send you an email and say, how can I do this? Do you have a a wiki or a packet or some sort of template that people can can borrow or use? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I think maybe that's something, um, I mean, I could probably point them to like five or six distributed blog posts, at least for the tech. Like, I would point them to a number of uh, posts, how Martha set up the DS106.us site. Mm -hmm. um, to some of the early planning, I have a document about that with Cogdog and Tom Woodward and Martha, and that's just kind of a rundown of some of our ideas. And then Brian Lamb's post about the radio, Grant Potter's post about setting up the radio, right, Timmy right. Boy's posts about DS106 TV. Now, is there a kind of full-blown, like, here's how? Uh, no, but maybe there should be. And I haven't been blogging nearly as much as I usually do, frankly, because I've been so locked into the TV and radio. And, the and they're thing, really, yeah. yeah, and I just really feel like that's a main part of my day now. And, and I do that as, as, I almost think of it as blogging in a different way. But mm -hmm. um, that said, I, I am going to take it. I, I promised April and at least a good portion of May to start wrapping up DS-106, my reflections, mm -hmm. um, featuring students' work, and also getting down to the nitty-gritty. Because a few people have already asked me, how are you doing this? How is the tech working? And I have to work with a number of people to get those posts out. But that might actually be an interesting thing is, you know, Zach, like I said, Noise Professor has this great diagram that when he blogs it, and if he blogs it, I'm really going to take it as, you know, a jumping point to talk about the class, at least from my perspective, and mm -hmm. how it's worked and how someone else might do it. Because that's what I spent most of my time doing when I did UMW Blogs, is actually blogging what I'm doing. And I tried to do that with DS-106, but DS-106 seems like, you know, there's so many different people doing it that I don't need to do it. You know what I mean? People are blogging what they're doing, how they're doing all the time. And I just feel like I'm part of that river and I'm digging, li listening to them say it because they're saying it A, better than I could. And, you know, I'm too busy up at four in the morning playing songs on DS-106 radio. <laughs> And then oiling the floor the next day at your house. Exactly. All day. Here's, All what, here's what would be useful, I think, to those of us out here in the hinterlands. One is, you know, I, I'm, I'm just such a fringe adjunct instructor at the places I teach that I cannot propose a course, and actually I'm looking to get back to the States, but that's a whole other story. But 
you know, if I were, I'm just imagining proposing a course, if, if you guys, and by you guys I mean everybody or somebody, yeah. had, you know, like, what is it that I present to my de department head or my administration to get this course going for a semester? You know, yeah, digital storytelling, what's that? So yeah. maybe a wiki or like a, a, a mock proposal or something like that. And then the other idea, and I'm not saying do this, Jim, but these are just ideas that I think would be useful to the, the broader community who will be, as you know, discovering this in the coming months. You know, six months from now, people will just be finding out about what we've been doing here. You know, yeah, they'll, they'll sure. want to do it. So a documentary might be useful. Yeah. Maybe some of your students could do that as an end of semester project or, you know, those who continue on as uh, lab assistants in your in your facility, you know, teacher's aides, you know, put together a documentary next semester, but you probably have enough stuff now that could serve for footage. Oh, and I love background. that. I think that's a brilliant idea, Scott. We should do it. Let's do it. Let's put out a call. I'll write a, let's, let's do it. Let's write a documentary about DS-106. Let's document what we've done. Wait, wait, no, it's gotta I love a, it. It's got to be a rockumentary. <laughs> Yeah, it does have to be a Rocky mystery. And the thing is, is I have archived almost everything I've done on the radio. And almost everything, I haven't done that much on the TV yet, but I have a pretty gigs and gigs and gigs of radio. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm sure everybody else out there, if I know the folks who are doing the radio, do too. And so the radio, I mean, the fact is, is the radio really was a very interesting element to this class. And the TV is certainly it's going to be what frames it going forward in a lot of ways too. But the radio gave when I when when that came up and folks like you were like, "Hey, what's this whole thing I hear about radio on Twitter?" And you know, like <laughs> people just came out who had no interest in the digital storytelling part, and that's fine with me. Yeah. But they just started to see something there and they they were like, "This is interesting." And I was like, yeah, it is. And Grant Potter, man, bless his soul, when he figured that out and he saw it, mm. and he seemed to have seen it clear as day, and he put yeah. it up, and he's like, this is how it runs. And, you know, as a station manager, you watch what he does regularly. I mean, that guy yeah. understands the medium. He Absolutely. understands how people work. And he's also a great community builder. So, I mean, I I would really love to do a documentary. I think there's a great story there. And, you know, radio is, is, is the hard, has been the heart of this class, at least for many of the people outside of the class. You know what I mean? I think the students, and we talked about this recently, the students think, I bet they think the radio is kind of wild and weird and trippy, but they haven't really jumped in. Mm -hmm. And I respect that. And some part of me is like, well, at least, you know, they know it's there. They've done a show on it. They know the possibility. But a lot of them haven't been like, hey, how do I get nice cast? Or, hey, how do I get, you know, lobby cast? Or, hey, how do I figure this out? And you there's know, been what, a little here's, bit. Here's what it is. <laughs> they've probably listened because at your insistence, and they've listened for a little while, and they've probably said, ooh, boy. I know. Exactly. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what is this? this yeah. <laughs> but still, and I, I respect that. I mean, I'm not going to. It, they don't have to. I mean, they do what they do, and that's that's cool. And they make fun of me all the time, and they understand that I'm kind of a psycho. So they, they're smarter than me. But for me, that's been a heart and soul of, like, for me, the energy of this class has come out of the, the radio as just their work. I mean, their work's been amazing. Hmm. But the radio has been something else because I really do feel like that sense of community in touch with these people who many of whom I've never met before and many of whom before this class I was like hey I wouldn't have known you probably wouldn't have heard of me I wouldn't have heard of you before this class noise professor you know we had contact but I didn't really know him know him until this I mean Dr. Garcia came out of nowhere and she like yeah. owns DS106 radio I mean I'm <laughs> afraid to you know she is like the matron in charge oh, there's Lord. no question about that yeah, she's great so, I mean, and Rowan Peter over in Australia. I mean, it's just so many great people. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. It's amazing. It sound, and listening to you talk there just a moment ago, it sounds like through this discovery that you've been able to uh, accidentally perhaps just discover something about yourself or unlock a certain part of your identity that was you know, perhaps always there, but you've just found this way to express it, and you've run with that. Is that fair to say? Yeah, psycho. Yeah, that's right. Psycho. I've, I've discovered that I've been psycho, and I'm running with that. 
I don't, I don't mean the psycho part, but I just, <laughs> you know what I mean. Just, you know, you've, you're, you are a total natural when you're talking, and that must be your personality, obviously. But, I mean, you just have this connectability when, when we're listening to you. And, uh, Scala, you know, I'm, on the, I'm on the radio right now or the TV with you. And you're going to talk to me about a natural when it comes to talking? Look, Scott Lowe, it's been said before, and I'll say it again. You are radio. Well, th yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you have the voice. I don't feel like it. It's it's grueling, but yeah, I, I love it. I totally love it, and I'm just that's it's not my it's not my story. It's your story. It's hey, a, it's, it's a victory story, lap. It's, it's a victory DS one hundred six. It's not mine. Yeah. I take no credit for it. Look, yeah. man, DS one hundred six. I've taught it twice before, by myself. You know, you know, people want to say DS one hundred six and Jim Groom, but it's not right. Dude, mm. Jim Groom already taught DS one hundred six. This is not about Jim Groom. This is about a crazy happening through a whole group of people on the radio, in the blogs, and they wanted to do it. You know why? Because. I firmly believe that people do want to have fun when they do this shit, mm -hmm. and they do want to break some laws, and they do want to <laughs> screw up some things, and you know they want to think that their job is fun, and I'm yeah. with them in that. And so, you know, we all had the occasion through DS106, but this isn't about. I, I don't think of it as a victory lap. I think of it as a victory lap for freaking online ed. Yeah, that's what go. it is, and and we're all part of it, man. And we should all be proud of what we're doing. We should take it to the next level. I mean, I don't want to stop doing it. That's the thing. <laughs> I don't want it to be like, yo, this is great. That was great. No, no. DS-106 no, no, no longer need be a class. It could be a frame of mind in the community. No, I don't want to own it. I certainly don't. I've been down that road with EduPunk. It sucks. <laughs> it's bullshit. I'm dying to inquire in that direction, but I, I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if I can handle the answers. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> that sounds like yeah, a great story. Yeah, it is. One day we'll talk about it. I mean, we could now, but I, I think yeah. it would it would rain on what's so great about DS one hundred six. Well, yeah. DS one hundred six, you know what it is? It's it's the answer to all that without all the kind of without all the baggage, you know, mm -hmm. which I like. And you know, it's just it's just happening, and no one's dictating it, and it's not one same person saying, this is what it is, you know? Well, I would love for someone to come up and say, what is DS-106? I'd be like, I, <laughs> it's just a term that describes a group of people doing awesome shit, and why aren't you? Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, the why aren't you tag at the end. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> why aren't you doing awesome shit? If you're an instructional technologist, or you're a professor, or whatever, and you know, you're interested in online learning, man... This is the community I'd want to be a part of. Yeah. And you man, know what? The community's man, pretty goddamn I, open. i got to make something happen. I'm just I'm in a rut here. And, man, oh. you're making it happen. Well, the, what? You, no, I mean, I you just mean personally and professionally. i, I got to get... I don't want to get into that right now, but that's... If I could be in, like, a situation where you are just with these great students and technology, you know, that's, that's what I want to make happen. So. Yeah, well, listen, so you are, so there you're adjuncted, because I adjuncted at yeah. CUNY for like seven, eight years. Yeah. So I know the adjunct shuffle. Yeah. And then that's a rough one. How is it over in Japan? Do they treat you any better, or is it worse? The only, the only nice part is, is a, a year-round salary for working about seven months. But That's nice. Yeah, that's nice, but going to three different places a week with six or seven different ESL-type lesson plans... And no yeah. desk. Yeah, it's 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 a rough haul. Uh, yeah, you don't old. have any space. Yeah, no space. So I got to make something happen. But that's not for here and now. That's just for my own interior but dialogue. Do you do you now? How do you like being in Japan? Uh, I'm I'm done with it. I'm I'm tired of it. It's, you are. Yeah. It's my I've got my family has health issues back in the states. I'm an only child and. Feel like I need to be with my parents right now. So, totally. Yeah. So Are they in California? Oregon. Yeah, they're in Oregon. Oregon. Nice. Yeah, it is nice. Nice. Beautiful place. Oregon. Yeah. So that's so, that. So you making the move? Uh, not anytime soon. Got to have a plan first. Yeah. See, it's interesting. And I'll tell you, I'm coming at coming at this from the other side. So. I'm actually. My wife is from Italy. She came here when she was in her late 20s, early 30s, and we met and uh, got married. We had three kids. Uh, not unlike what you did, and she stayed here. Well, I don't know what you did, so I'm mm -hmm. not going to say that. 
but she st- she stayed here in uh, the U.S. and we lived in New York City for a number of years, and then we came down to Fredericksburg when I got this job. And you know, we face the question of going back to Italy, and right. I don't know if it will happen, but you know, you never know. And there's been talk about you know maybe her getting a job back there, and you know me being able to telecommute from Italy. Who knows if that would ever happen? You know, if I don't mention it again, it probably didn't. But mm-hmm. you know, I think to myself like, what would it be like? to go back to Italy and to live there for a year because I've been there now seven, eight times, maybe more. I love it. Good friends back there and stuff. But I could imagine getting back there and being like, I want to go home. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, I could, I could totally imagine that. I don't know. I, it's, it's kind of a trippy thing to be an expatriate, you know? Yeah. Well, I would go for it if I were you. That sounds like a great trip. Italy. I mean, can't go wrong with that. Yeah, but Tokyo, man. Tokyo is like one of the places most in the world I want to visit. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. And this is just such a strange time here now, just obviously with, with the disasters and stuff. And you know, I've said it a yeah. couple of times already. I don't want to belabor the point, but, you know, these young people that I'm teaching, you know, their their entire future has been changed since March 11th. I mean, this country is a wreck Yeah. on a, a financial level, a rebuilding level. You know, they're... they're wondering what to do with that whole northeastern region that has just been leveled. Um, most of the population, as you've heard, is elderly, you know, older than 60 years old. And uh, what's the point in rebuilding it for, you know, communities that were dwindling and dying off anyhow? Yeah. And just the energy issue and, you know, they've, they've got a monumental rebuilding job and I don't have that much to contribute, really. Yeah. So, and it's going to be difficult and uncomfortable here in the in the coming years. So I don't know. Yeah. It's going to get rough. Now, how long have you been there? Uh, since 98. Wow. Yeah, then was in Thailand for three years prior to that, so I've been away for a long time. You really have. Yeah, I mean, my so dad, you've been out of country? Yeah, my dad had just retired from endodontics when I laid, had Parkinson's for a couple of years, but he was still you know, able to play tennis and in pretty good shape, but it's just there's been that deterioration that the disease exacts, yeah. and my mom is having to basically take care of him full time. And that's just a, a tough one, real tough. That so is tough. I'd like to be I actually watched to my mom go through Parkinson's at the end of her life. That's right. And she, had, she got it late, um, mm. and she had died of other complications. But watching that is it, it's terrible. It's, it's really hard to watch. Heartbreak. So I feel for you and your Thanks. father yeah. and your mom. I mean, that's yeah. rough. Yeah. So what would you do if you came back here? Would you want to teach? Well, can, I, can I dream aloud for a minute? Sure, I'd love to. There is a... Uh, there's a High school. It used to be a high school radio station in my hometown that was run by the school district. In fact, that's where I met my, my, met my wife. But that's another story. But I was teaching there just as a not a teacher, but as this community person who got paid to teach the students how to do news. And in the intervening years, they've the school district has stopped paying for it, although the station still exists and their their studio is still in a high school. So I would my dream is to go back and get funding to restart community radio and teach students at the, at the different high schools in the town and do uh, do community radio in this facility that now is just basically replaying NPR type programming you know it's it's there but it's not being fully util- utilized as a live radio experience and it's not drawing in community members to participate although it seems like it could if there were yeah. a couple of people there but of course there would have to be funding as well so I don't have any idea how to make that happen but that's kind Tanya, of that's a, a dream that's a who the hell would have thought anything about radio and now i'm on the radio you know 10 12 hours a day and the relate <laughs> and it's interesting too because one of the things that changed about it one of the things that you might be able to frame as you know high schools and k-12 all over the u.s are going through this whole idea of digital literacy and what that means and you know we used to have you know even back in the day with me we had our kind of film club we had our own radio station we did stuff like that in mm-hmm. high school right. and we've gotten away from that to some degree but like this would be the perfect time to kind of reinvent it yes. kind of like this retro technology so there's got to be a grant there Scott Lowe. Yeah. There's got to be a way to kind of convince other people. And Oregon's pretty kind of progressive in this regard. So, I mean, from what I understand, I have mm-hmm. a few friends who live out in Portland, but I don't think, I mean, I think not only is it an awesome dream, but I think it's something that you can actually act on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and thank like, you. Who thank better you. to do it? Because look at you. I mean, like this, like talk about the professional development. 
Mm -hmm. Right, and I, if if DS one hundred six becomes a big thing for, you know, people, I hope it does. Like people can say, look, look at all the shit I did in this, and give me a job because yeah. I rule. You know, that's yeah. that's the deal. That's what it should be. And now you have a network of people to hopefully push for that. Word up, word up. I mean, and they've nah, also they've also got remember community access television. Yeah, yeah, they've that's they've awesome. got the studio in the adjoining. Um, Play. It used to be the auto shop in the 60s and 70s, and then they got some money in the early 80s for community access television and built a studio, and then they moved the radio transmitter there. So it's it's all there, ready to go, just kind of mothballed at present because they lost the teachers to teach it. So yeah, sort of like I'm telling. an end around because you you know well anybody who's listening to this right now would would agree that there is value in getting the young people telling stories and reporting and just expressing themselves creatively in the media you know there's just inherent value in that isn't there oh absolutely you know, i mean it's well, the way to go and it's more and more how education should be i mean because then that you have an approach of you know the media is what's shaping us as a culture how do we as students start thinking about really intervening in it and and that shouldn't that shouldn't start in college and i don't even know if it does start in college no man no. it should start in kindergarten yeah. Well, I mean, that comes back to what Brian Lamb was telling your class about with, you know, the original sort of love that he had for the the mashup and, you know, that the, the, those those um hacked television commercials that uh, you know, this the sense of being able to overturn the current regime by, you know, building our own media and perhaps it never turned out as the ideal suggested it would, but, you know, there's it's a long game. Yeah, it is a long game. And you know what? Even if it doesn't, and, you know, I love Brian Lamb, and I think, you know, his sober, he always has that sobering vision, and it's important because I get carried away with this stuff. But even if I take some of the liberatory rhetoric out of it, it's pretty freaking fun, too. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like the creative, creative part of it is good fun. And, you know, I want it to be liberatory, too, because then you have the whole package. But, you know, maybe it's just liberatory for you. Maybe that's enough. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Because I don't believe in the whole politics thing anyway. I mean, Democrats, Republicans, they're all the same. You know, they depress me equally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not looking to them. Yeah. You know, and I'm looking to the big solutions. You know, yeah. that's just annoying. Were, were you kind of hoping that they would shut everything down last week? Well, you know... I mean, would, that, I, would they have stopped sending the drone missiles into Afghanistan, too? <laughs> exactly. You know, there's, there could have been some good things out of that. Exactly. I mean, and I'm a state worker, so oh, I wouldn't yeah. have felt the federal bro breakdown. But, you know, it's just the fact that, you know, they're all grandstanding on this stuff yeah. and these money issues and budgetary issues. But we really know they're just fighting for interests. I mean, it just I just wish, you know, the fact... I wish they were a little bit more... Like, I don't know, elegant in the way they screw us. Now it just all seems so apparent. Right? You know, there's no elegance to being screwed. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like a, a motel bang. Oh, it's like God. we're going to bang the public. <laughs> you know, it's not like we're going to wine and dine the public before we screw them. We're just going to flat out bang them. It's terrible. I feel like I'm being raped. Sadly, yeah, sadly, that's uh, probably too true. Yeah, I know, but I I shouldn't talk politics. I'm too ignorant about it because I don't care. Yeah, we need more of the uh, Svengali sense among our politicians. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then, you know, someone who actually cares would probably have something intelligent to say, but, you know. That would uh, be nice. Yeah. But that's not me, man. <laughs> not me, man. I just want to watch the Lebowski. Yeah, it makes them awesome. Well, that's all right, right. Jim, I, I actually I do got to get going, but I thank you so much for this call and... Oh, I really Scott, enjoyed hearing great. your thoughts. Man, thanks for having me on for so long. I bothered you, but I loved it. Oh, no bother at all. No bother. I just apologize to the people having to look at my mug in the top right corner. <laughs> Should have played some video. <laughs> you are the man. Scott Lowe is radio. DS106 TV and radio for life. Thanks, Jim. Take care, bud. I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye. You got it.